What's up guys, it's on Malik back here. So we recently got a look at the upcoming Summer Wave sets, which included the Night Buzzard, which I believe will probably be the last Rise of Skywalker set we get this year. And with that, I thought now would be a great time to take a look back at all the sequel trilogy sets we've gotten so far and rank the top 10 best ones. Now this video will only be including sets from The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker. Since Rogue One, Solo, and The Mandalorian aren't part of that trilogy, the sets from those movies won't be in this list. But I'll definitely do a video on that later, so stay tuned. Alright, so let's start things off with our number 10 spot, the Resistance Troop Transport. It came out during the second wave of Force Awakens, retailed for $70 and included 646 pieces. It includes some pretty cool figures like Admiral Akbar, and it's one of two sets that includes a general Leia figure that we need way more of. The vehicle itself doesn't look that amazing or anything, and we only saw it briefly in the movie, but it is a troop transport, which I'm a big fan of, and my main reason I find it interesting is simply because it's one of the only unique vehicles we got in the sequel trilogy. Don't get me wrong, I really like the vehicles in the sequel trilogy, but I really hated that all the vehicles were just new variations of original trilogy vehicles and didn't take any risks. You'll hear me bring up this point a lot throughout the video. This is one of the few new vehicles in the sequel trilogy, although it does look a lot like a B-Wing because it canonically is actually based on it. Overall, it's a pretty cool vehicle with good figures and makes for a nice set. On to number 9, we have the Rise of Skywalker Millennium Falcon. It retails for $160 and includes 1,351 pieces. The minifigures in this set are pretty great, especially Lando and Finn, but the great part about this set is its newer design. Ever since LEGO introduced the pie piece design for the Millennium Falcon in 2004, they haven't really gotten around the issue of the gaps that show up between the wedges. And this is the first time LEGO really fixed that issue, excluding the UCS Millennium Falcons and the original Millennium Falcon with the large molds. The new design looks great without the gaps, but I always thought the ship lacked detail on the surface and could have used some greebling, especially in the two front spokes. I do think the price is really high, but that's expected with a set based on a new Star Wars movie. Overall, it's the best non-UCS Millennium Falcon we've gotten to date. At number 8, we have Kylo Ren's shuttle from The Rise of Skywalker. It retailed for $130 and has 1,003 pieces. I really like the minifigure selection in this set with the new Kylo Ren, General Pride, and two Knights of Ren. Even though I didn't really like General Pride in the movie, I really thought Hux should have played his character's role. He's still a cool figure to get. The Knights of Ren were practically useless in the movie, but after reading the Rise of Kylo Ren comic, which I highly recommend, I like them a lot better. We also get a really great looking Sith Trooper, which are great figures. Moving on to the actual set, it looks amazing, but a lot of that is due to LEGO already having made this vehicle during The Force Awakens, which was just so, so bad. Honestly, they were probably going off concept art though, so it's a little understandable. I love that they went with black pieces and the trans red pieces for the front windscreen. It makes it look so menacing. The ship is also super iconic and is in every sequel trilogy movie, which makes it even more desirable. It's another one of those unique ships in the whole trilogy. Okay, at number 7 we have another very unique ship, the Resistance Bomber. It retailed for $110 and included 778 pieces, so not the greatest in terms of price. The minifigures in this one are just okay, the main ones being Holdo and Poe in his jumpsuit, and getting a bunch of resistance pilots is also great. The real star of this set for me is the ship itself though, just like the last few picks it's one of those unique vehicles in the new films. Also the opening scene in The Last Jedi is really great, it was shot very well and was a super dope scene, which makes this set even cooler. I know a lot of people took issue with the bombs falling without gravity, but this is Star Wars, everything is imaginary, we don't need to think that hard about it. Although I'm pretty sure they did address it in the canon. I'm not sure what it is about the ship, maybe it's the large open glass turret portions, but it gives me World War II bomber vibes. The build is awesome as well, it could have been a little larger considering the price, but nonetheless it still looks great. On to number 6 with Poe's X-Wing fighter, the Force Awakens version. It retailed for 80 bucks and included 717 pieces. And with the size of the whole thing, it's not a bad deal. I like the minifigure selection in this one too with the extra pilot and ground crew. I've always really liked the BB-8 figure so getting him in this one is awesome. Now we've been talking a lot about unique vehicles today and unfortunately this is not one of them. I really don't like that the Rebel fleet in the sequel trilogy is made up of X-Wings, A-Wings, and Y-Wings. As LEGO X-Wings go, this is a very well designed one, but the best thing about this one is the paint job. It's one of the only dark stealthy X-Wings we have in the Star Wars universe, and like the only one we have in LEGO form as well. 
Although it's not very unique, it's still one of my favorite LEGO X-Wings we've ever received. Okay, we are now halfway through our list and at our number 5 spot, we have the First Order Transporter. It retailed for $90 and included 792 pieces. It may feel a little expensive with the size, but the build on this one is very solid and well done. The minifigure selection here is really awesome. We get Phasma, who is a great looking character, but super underused in the films. The rest of the minifigures are just regular first order and resistance troopers, which makes this a great set for army building. This is another one of those unique designs from the sequel trilogy, and my favorite part about it is how the front doors come down, kind of like a landing craft from World War II. It's also shaped just like one, and you can really see the inspiration in the vehicle's design. As you can see, I like troop transports a lot, and this is my favorite one from this era. At number 4, we have the First Order Star Destroyer. It retailed for $160, bucks, but does also include 1,416 pieces, which isn't too bad. I do think the minifigure selection here could have been better. Getting Snoke and First Order Officers and Pilot are great, but I do think the set could have used more regular Stormtroopers considering the price. The ship's design isn't too unique and is just a modified Star Destroyer from the original trilogy, but at least they tried to change it up a little bit. The set's interior isn't too special in my opinion, getting the main bridge is great but the rest of it is way too compact to make anything relevant. My favorite part about this though is just that it's a large cruiser. I love when LEGO does this for ships from any era. It would have been even better to get the Resistance's counterpart to this ship, especially since the entire movie is about chasing one super slowly through space. But nonetheless, it's a great vehicle and a great set. We are now at our top 3 finalists, so at our number 3 spot we have the Duel on Starkiller base. It retails for $20 and includes 191 pieces, which is a great deal. The minifigure selection is awesome since it includes both Rey and Kylo for a low price. It may seem odd that we have such a small set set so high on the list, but I think it's the start of something awesome LEGO is now doing by giving us really great duels with important characters in small sets for a low price. It makes it great for collecting important characters for cheap. Since then we've also gotten the episode 3 equivalent of this set with the duel on Mustafar, which is a great set to see. Another great part about this set is that it makes for a great display piece that doesn't take up too much space. The play features aren't too intrusive and blend in well, and the set reminds me of some of those great dioramas I see mock makers build on Instagram. At our number 2 spot we have the TIE Silencer. It retailed for 80 bucks and included 630 pieces, which may not seem great by price per part, but the size of the vehicle does make it feel worth it. I thought the minifigure selection is really good, getting Kylo and a Stormtrooper seem expected, but the Special Forces TIE Fighter Pilot and BB-9E make it even better. The TIE Silencer is probably my favorite design of TIE Fighter we've ever gotten. It combines the solar panels of the TIE Interceptor and the rear of the TIE Advance with the front cockpit of Kylo Ren's shuttle. All those badass elements from other great looking ships make this aesthetically the ultimate starfighter in the Star Wars universe. Before we go on to our number one spot, let's take a look at a few honorable mentions without going into too much detail. So for our honorable mentions, we have Ray's Speeder, which is a very unique vehicle with a main character for a great price. The Resistance Trooper Battle Pack that includes some really great helmet pieces that make the Resistance Troopers look way, way better. And the Praetorian Guard Battle Pack that lets you get a hold of these awesome figs for a great price. I also wanted to include the UCS Millennium Falcon, which is technically also a sequel trilogy set, but in my opinion, didn't really do enough to feel like one. I consider it more of an original trilogy set. Okay guys, here we are at our number one spot, which may be pretty obvious. So at our number one spot, we have Snoke's Throne Room. It retailed for $70 and includes 492 pieces, which is not the greatest price, but everything else about it makes this set worth it. The minifigure selection here is absolutely perfect with the most important characters from the movie, Kylo, Snoke, and Rey in her Jedi outfit. Getting the Praetorian Guards is also great as well since they look so cool and were so awesome in the movie. Now it's a little ironic that this is my number one set since The Last Jedi is my least favorite movie of the sequel trilogy, but that just goes to show how great this moment in the movie was. The scene may be one of the best in Star Wars history, it is an amazing duel with great choreography and cinematography. The amount of red and fire just make it look so awesome. I still think Snoke shouldn't have died that early in the trilogy, but man that scene is still awesome. The build up, the execution, and conclusion are just perfect. I'm getting a little carried away talking about the actual scene, but this set captures that moment just perfectly. The play features blend in nicely, and the throne looks great as well. The only thing I'd like to see added would be large red cloth pieces for the drapes in the background. This set would also make for one of the best Star Wars display pieces you could buy. 
Overall, it's such a great display set that includes all the minifigures you want in one box. Okay guys, there are your top 10 sequel trilogy LEGO Star Wars sets. As always, this list is just my opinion, so make sure to go down in the comments below and let me know what your list would look like. And if you guys want to see more top 10 videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel and check out some previous videos as well. Alright guys, that's pretty much going to do it for me and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.